Hello, and welcome to another episode of Dax in 10. Hey everyone, a bit of a change in format with today's episode. Uh, instead of focusing on a particular function or group of functions as I've done in the past, I'm going to share with you a couple of tips on how you can make your DAX code both easier to read and easier to work with. I'm going to start off by showing you how to use DAX variables in your code, and not only to make it easier to read, but potentially more efficient to run. And then I'm going to show you a great way you can quickly reformat your code so that it has a consistent layout. Let's start by taking a look at DAX variables. Um, so basically what DAX variables uh, do is they give you a great way to simplify uh, what can be quite complex DAX statements within your code. Um, you start off by defining a variable name with the var function and then you set it to equal a DAX expression uh, and that can return either a scalar value or a table. Uh, there's a few things to bear in mind when you're naming your variables. So uh, delimiters are not supported. And basically the supported character set is alphanumeric, so a to z, zero to nine. But you can't use uh, numeric values as the first character of a variable name. Uh, you can, however, use a double underscore. Uh, you can't use reserved keywords, uh, names of existing tables, or empty spaces within your variable name. And the returned value is basically the result of the DAX expression uh, that you set the variable to equal. Okay, so let's take a look at an example of uh, variables in use. Uh, I've got a simple dashboard here that's given me an analysis of sales. Uh, I have a chart here that's given me the breakdown of sales per year. And then I've got some measures that I've set up which I'm visualizing in these card visuals here. Uh, so if I select a particular year in my chart, uh, I get back the year I've selected, total sales for that year, total sales for the previous year, and then some details of difference in terms of monetary value and percentage uh, between the two years. Okay, so most of these measures are, are fairly straightforward, uh, but I do have one here that's a little bit more complicated and I've used a variable uh, to make it a little bit more easier to understand. Uh, in this example here today, I'm gonna to be using uh, variables within measures, but you can also uh, use variables when you're creating calculated columns as well. So you can use them in both scenarios. Uh, so let's take a look at uh, this particular measure that I've created here. And we can see that it's a slightly different format to what we've been used to in the past. And um, basically, you now have your uh, measure name, and then it's split into two sections. Uh, with the variable declarations at the top here, and then uh, we have this return. And then what it returns is the, uh, the the code for the DAX expression that we want to return uh, as the measure for for the measure, uh, but using uh, the variables within in that uh, DAX bit of DAX code. In this particular example, I'm declaring just a single variable, uh, but you can declare as many variables as you need. And typically in a more complicated piece of DAX code, you will be uh, wanting to declare several variables. Uh, in this particular instance, I've uh, declared a variable with the name of selected year, and into that I'm uh, using the DAX function selected value to pass back the currently selected calendar year and taking one away from that. So fairly sort of simple, straightforward. DAX expression there. That variable is then being passed into the uh, piece of DAX code that's being used to calculate the prior year sales measure. So all that's doing is calculating the sum of sales amount uh, where the calendar year is equal to the value in our selected year uh, variable. So we can see that in action here. I've selected 2013. Uh, it's going away and collecting the sum of sales amount for uh, the year 2012. So Let's take a look at a, another uh, measure here, uh, which is selected year. Now currently that's uh, displaying uh, the selected year where I've got a single year selected or where I, I haven't, uh, it returns a blank. And that's part of the uh, selected uh, value function used in the selected year measure. So let's take a look at that. Uh, but what it would be nice to do is instead of returning a blank where I haven't got a single selected uh, value, uh, return something like multiple years. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. Uh, and as part of that, I'm going to declare a couple of variables. So uh, declare my first variable, and I'm going to call that selected year. And I use my existing 
a function of selected year. And then I'm going to create a second variable. Uh, I'm going to call that multi select. And I'm going to put in there some text of multiple years. Okay, so that's my variable declaration done. I use the return keyword to let it know that I'm now going to do the uh, DAX code for the measure. In this case, I'm going to use start off with an if function if is blank. Uh, pass in my selected year variable. I'll return the value in the multi select variable. Uh, in this case, you can see uh, when I get my options coming up, I'll show it with the next one. Uh, so if not, it's going to be selected year. Uh, so in the list of potential options, we can see uh, our variables listed there uh, with the XY icon to show that it's a variable. Uh, I can go ahead and select that, selected year. Uh, and this is a good e example of where um, not only does it make your code uh, more clear to read, but using variables can be more efficient. Uh, so had I done this without variables and used this, this selected value uh, in my uh, statement, I'd have, I'd have had to put it in there twice and it would have evaluated uh, that function twice. Um, now, obviously in this particular example, that's, that's not so important. However, if you're using uh, say a function that iterates over a table that's got millions and millions of rows in it, uh, it's going to have to do that twice. However, if you use a variable, it's only got to evaluate that uh, function once, and then it passes the, the values back into your variable, and then of course you, you use the variable multiple times, but it's only ever had to do that evaluation of that function uh, the once. Uh, so yeah, if you're, if you're using a function that's iterating over a quite a large table, uh, there is the potential there to make your code more efficient and for it to uh, improve performance. Okay, so let's try that. Uh, and we go back. If we've only got, uh, if we haven't got any years selected, we get multiple years being returned. If I select a particular year, so I say 2013, uh, I get 2013 coming back. Now at the moment it thinks that's a, a numeric value, so we just go back in and change selected year. Uh, I'm going to format that. Tell it its text, and then hopefully I should get back uh, a proper four-digit year. And indeed I do. Okay, so uh, that's a quick uh, run through of using variables. I hope you can see the potential there to make your code uh, easier to read, and also uh, you appreciate the uh, possibility to make your code more efficient. Uh, in the examples we looked at at the moment, it's not so important, but I can assure you as you uh, as you move on through using DAX, it will quickly get uh, more complicated. And if you don't use variables, your code will be uh, extremely difficult to read, especially if you've got lots of uh, nested functions in there. Okay, so now I'm going to uh, move on to my uh, second tip, and that is how you can quickly and easily uh, change the layout of your code uh, so it's nice and consistent. Uh, and you can do that by going to a website called daxformatter.com. So if we uh, take an example of our code. So let's go back to that uh, selected year, uh, the function that we've just, or measure that we've just created. I'm going to copy that, control C, and I'm going to head over to daxformatter.com and I'm going to paste my code in. Control V, uh, I click on the format button and with a quick bit of magic, it goes away and reformats my code using a set of uh, DAX formatting rules, uh, which are listed out here. I won't go there for the moment, but uh, this basically this site is run by the guys that uh, run the SQLBI.com website. So that's Alberto Ferrari and Marco Russo, uh, and they're probably the most uh, prominent uh, guys uh, in terms of knowledge on DAX. Uh, so this is a great, uh, great site to go to. They've also got some other uh, interesting sites you might want to look at. So there's some DAX patterns there. So uh, that's another uh, site worth looking at. Now copy that out. I go back to my dashboard, paste the code back in there, and I have some nicely formatted DAX code. 
Okay, so there's a, a couple of tips there. Hope you found them useful. I'd certainly recommend you adopt them as best practice. Certainly as you go through using DAX, I can, I can guarantee uh, they will assist you in making your life easier by making your code easier to read and work with. Okay, so that's it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed learning DAX with DAX Intent. If you did, then please give me a big thumbs up uh, and please feel free to leave a comment. If you uh, want to find out when the next episode of DAX in 10 is available or if you want to support the channel, then please consider subscribing. Until the next time, thanks for watching.